LTV News is back for one final show, and we're so excited about all the news we have to share with you today. Starting with a new club opening up for dogs, a wild new flavor of ketchup, and how this LaSalle professor is teaching new ways outside of the classroom. Hello, I'm Erin Holly, And I'm Casey Medico. Stay tuned to hear about why kids are being banned from stores in the city, and how these two sisters are baking their way to the top. You won't want to miss it. You're watching LTV News where the action never stops. Hello and welcome to LTV News, where we bring you everything from 20th and Olney Avenue, Philadelphia, and the world. There's a lot to catch up on in the next half hour, so don't go anywhere, because for our last episode, we have a few surprises that you won't want to miss. The nursing program here at LaSalle is trying a different kind of teaching technique. Assistant Professor Christina Harkins has thought of a way to teach outside of the classroom that is through escape rooms. The escape rooms consist of being, quote, trapped in a room with a patient and you have a certain amount of time to treat the patient. You must use tools and clues around the classroom to help the patient. Nursing major Caitlin Mercurio loved her experience with the escape room. Mercurio stated, quote, I was fully on the floor just to find a clue beneath the bed in the room and little moments like that make the whole experience memorable, end quote. Professor Harkins hopes to keep teaching this way and to expand on the puzzles, making them more challenging and fun. Author of Vina. Her new book titled, Take Control of Your Own Career, Do What You Desire, Dare, and Deserve to Do. The book maintains stories and reflections of her career while also uplifting the readers of the book to get what they want to be. Be on the lookout for her new book as is out now. In sports news, LaSalle men's basketball special assistant to the head coach Joe McCulloch has been named one of the recipients of the Joe Lapchick Character Award. The award is given to individuals who have displayed the character traits of former St. John's and New York Knicks coach Joe Lapchick. Mihalik joins Jim Nance, Tim Clues, and Gail Marquise as this year's recipients. The award ceremony will be held in New York on September 21st. Mihalik is coming off a successful season coaching the Explorers, helping the team to reach the Atlantic 10 tournament quarterfinals for the first time since 2005. He has had a long and successful coaching career, including 141 wins as head coach of Hofstra. Last weekend, the Mask of LaSalle put on a stellar performance for the LaSalle community. This year, The Mask put on the production of Drinking Habits, a play about two nuns who secretly make wine to keep the convent's door open. These nuns believe that spies from Rome were sent to expose them and shut them down. Uh, the Mask put on three performances of this play and they did not disappoint. General, general admission tickets were $12 and seniors, kids, and alumni tickets were sold at discounted $8. The mask production had a great turnout and a lot of secrets and wine were spilled in the Dan Ron Theater last weekend. Northeastern University will recognize an acclaimed sociologist and a journalism visionary with honorary degrees in its 2023 undergraduate commencement exercises. Alondra Nelson is a sociologist and author who made groundbreaking discoveries on science and technology that focus on ethics, racial and gender equality and access. In early 2021, Nelson served in the White House Office of Science and Technology Department in the newly created position of Principal Deputy Director for Science and Society. The President of the United States, Joe Biden, noted that her leadership on the inequities and the power dynamics that sit beneath the surface of scientific research and the technology we build. Last week, Tori had the chance to sit down with Christina Knox, the person in charge of planning this year's AST's annual philanthropy walk for Women Against Abuse. Stick around to hear all about the hard work she's put into this event. Hi, my name is Tori Walker, and today we have a very special guest with us, Christina Knox, who is an AST Alpha Sigma Tau, and is hosting the, a Women Against Abuse walk that is being presented next week. Hey, Christina, thank you for coming on the show today. 
No problem. Thank you for having me. Definitely. I definitely wanted to have you on because, because I, th I think it's very important to have, you know, what you guys are doing. I really love the philanthropy and all that. Um, Thank you. Just talk about, you know, your, your position so far of um, being an AST, you know, how long you've been a part of this, you know, sorority and all that. I've been a part of AST for over a year right now. I am the director of philanthropy, so I'm in charge of all the fundraising events that we do, um, which our biggest fundraising event is actually coming up next week, like you Perfect. said, um, Women Walk Together. That's our walk that we raise money for women against abuse. So, you know, talk about what inspired, you know, Alpha Sigma Tau to, like, have that as their philanthropic, you know, position. Um, so our national philanthropy is um, women's wellness in this initiative mm -hmm. and like their motto or saying with um, Alpha Sigma Tau is w empowered women empower women. Yeah, yeah. So we were trying to that. find that here in Philadelphia and we found women's against abuse For and sure. they did what we thought fit our values. Definitely. So, I yeah. love that. Um, you know, I don't know, do you know any, like, about the history of, like, women against abuse about that? Talk about it a little bit, you know? Um, so, it started in 1976. Wow. Um, it was originally just a hotline um, for a neighborhood women's center. Mm -hmm. And then the year following year, they actually made it um, into a shelter, but they mm -hmm. rented a house that had three bedrooms in it. Oh, and then wow. they also then got legal counseling for it that year, too. So then that's when, like... It really like started to be like a nonprofit yeah. organization. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds dope. Um, you know, I know you're very busy right yes. now. I know you're a full time student. Yes. You know, all while you know trying to get everything in place for mm -hmm. the event next week because it's, it's, I feel like it's going to be a lot of people. Yes. You know what I mean? So talk about you know the different things that you're doing right now. Is there any challenges that you're, you're coming across or anything like that? Talk about anything, about anything like that. You know. Um, right now, I'm just slowly like getting the decorations together. I have to blow up a balloon arch. That's probably going to be oh, my wow. biggest challenge. <laughs> um, <laughs> We have all the t-shirts we're going to sell, um, or if you register, you get it there too. Mm -hmm. um, just communicating also with LaSalle itself, because we're doing it here at LaSalle. Yeah. So like on the track, like I had to communicate with one person mm -hmm. to make sure I got it when I wanted it and like the times and everything. So that was like probably the hardest part. And Definitely. then like also like getting more fundraising and like flyers done. Like we all have to like communicate with yeah. LaSalle. So it's like very back and forth. For sure. Yeah. So speaking of flyers and all that, talk about like, how have you been promoting the event, you know, just so like different students could, you mm -hmm. know, see about the event, see if they want to go, anything like yeah. that. Um, talk about that process for you. So we actually, I made like a like generic email that you could send to all your professors. Definitely. So we like made that, we sent that out to all the professors that are the girls from our sorority did. Um, so some of the professors are even going to come to the walk. Oh, wow. Um, we have flyers almost in every building, um, which has a QR code on it that they can scan and sign up. And then we also post on our um, social media, like our Instagram, AST, LaSalle, yeah. um, just everything. And I For also sure. spoke in a class today, like my one of my classes. They okay. asked me if I wanted to speak about really? it. So it's just been like very welcoming. Definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, I know this is not the first time you guys are doing mm -hmm. it, right? It's like the fourth time, right? Yes. Um, you know, talk about, you know, how, how do you think LaSalle has like, you know, like said anything about previous events like that? And what are you most looking forward to? with this event, if that makes any sense, you know what I mean? Um, well, this event, I'm just so excited for because I think a lot more LaSallians are coming Definitely. out this year since think, COVID, because yeah. I feel like COVID really like made people not want to come out. It's not like, I know, like, pro like I said before, professors are coming out and I feel like they wouldn't have before because of COVID, for but sure. now they are like coming out and joining us and it's like really awesome. And also all the other like frats and sororities are coming to join us too. And it's gonna be like great. It's just mm. gonna be everyone there and it's gonna be so nice. Yeah, I can't wait to come. I'm definitely gonna be there. What? I can't wait to come. Um, tell us a little bit more about the core values and beliefs, you know, um, Alpha Sigma Tau really values, you know, do mm -hmm. you, you know, anything like that. Um, so our like Alpha Sigma Tau's personal values are um, graciousness, respect, intellect, uh, connections, and excellence. And we use that often with our philanthropy because sure. we strive for excellence and us trying to help everyone else do the same. And we just try to reach out to them, like connections, and just try to have them help them when we can and see what we can do with, for our community here. Sure. At Philly. So I know that you're a sophomore, right? Mm -hmm. You know, talk a little bit about any memorable events that you've been a part of with Alpha Sigma Tau so far with you? Um, so far, last year's walk was a lot of fun for really? me. I just, like, that's when I wanted to become this position because really? I just, I showed, like, how much we could do for our community and everything we've done. And also, we do, do trash bashes, like, with everything to, like, help clean up the Philadelphia community. Mm -hmm. And then we also just, um, 
we're gonna we have people coming in for tabling events from WAA, alumni like women against and yes, and alumni, yeah, everyone. Sure. Exactly. Um, lastly, you know, where can people donate? Where can people, you know, help out with, you know, your philanthropic mission? You know, um, they can go to ASD Crowd Change. If you see a flyer, they can scan the QR code and just sends you right up to it. I would suggest doing that. Yeah. Um, if you have any more questions, you always can DM AST's Instagram. They'll send you the link. It's, the link's also linked in the AST's Instagram. Okay. So, and then any donations, fine. But if you would like to join us for the walk, um, it's $15, and that's registration, and you get a T-shirt and a water sure. bottle. Come join us, y'all. Yes. Come join us, for real. Well, Christina, I appreciate you for coming on the show today, and I'm definitely, I'm going to be there. I'm definitely looking Thank forward you. to it. Um, you know, you have a free spot whenever you can. Okay. can Thank you so much. Definitely. Now back to Aaron and Casey. receives tickets to see Taylor Swift. The family of Doke said that she was a longtime fan of the pop country singer known as Taylor Swift. So they were determined to get her tickets. Doke has stage four adrenal cancer, which prompted her to move to Texas and start receiving treatment. However, she formerly lived in Philadelphia and was a student and cheerleader at Villanova University. She cheered for the team when they won the national championship at the NRG Stadium in 2016. The family of Doke got her the tickets to Swift's show on the 23rd of April in Houston. Doke said she cried when she found out she was going and that she was so excited. As of now, the Fashion District of Philadelphia will be enforcing an afternoon curfew for anyone under the age of 18. Officials say minors will not be allowed in the shopping mall without an adult over the age of 23 after 2 o'clock. This curfew is in response to large crowds of young people gathering in the mall. Customer Jacob Kramer said, there's so many fights, they just run around over this wall here and police have to come in and clear them. Anyone in the mall who appears to be under 18 will be approached by law enforcement and required to show identification. Anyone underage who works in the mall will be required to show proof of employment at the door and this will not affect their ability to work. The fashion district notes that they have full support from the city and the curfew will remain in effect until further notice. Summer is right around the corner in Philly. Around Rita's Water Ice created the perfect product for the upcoming season. Then the Chimney Creek Brewing Company is releasing Rita's Fruit Brews, which is a beer inspired by Rita's Mango Water Ice. According to the company, this beer is described as a refreshing blonde ale brewed with two-row malt, white wheat, flaked oats, and it is conditioned on loads of mangoes. Rita's Fruit Brews will be sold in 12-ounce six-packs, which are located in three PA cities of Croydon, Dublin, and New Hope. Following the launch, these beers will be able to be found in Giant, Wegmans, Weiss, and on GoPuff. Go cool off in the, in the heat of the summer with the Rita's Fruit Brew. Before we continue, we have just a quick break, but stick around to hear about the Eagles' newest news and a new local dog-friendly club, and also how you can make $500 in Korea by just going outside. People join Walk MS to raise awareness and funds that change the world for everyone affected by multiple sclerosis. Walk MS brings communities together, creating teams with friends, loved ones, and co-workers to rally around those we care about and end MS forever. Together, we can change the world for people with MS. Register today at walkms.org. The Kelly Green jersey is making a comeback for the Philadelphia Eagles. Owner Jeffrey Lurie announced at the NFL owners meeting that the popular jersey color will be an alternate option for the Eagles in the 2023 season. Lurie had initially announced last year that the Eagles were bringing back the Kelly Green jerseys, but it would take a year to get it right. The NFL's policy to change in 2021 allowed teams to use two different helmets starting in the 2022 season. Lurie is also pushing for the league to allow use of two alternate helmets, which would enable them to keep a black helmet in addition to the Kelly Green alternate. 
West Philadelphia senior Alyssa Perrin is heading to Harvard in the fall and she credits part of her going to a nonprofit organization in Fairmount Park. The Paul Robeson High School senior shared the news with the staff at work to ride a nonprofit community based prevention program that she's a part of. It helps under resource urban kids through activities like horsemanship, Ukraine sports, and education. Parents said she was originally set on attending Cornell, but an important trip to Boston changed that. Her getting ex accepted to Harvard has led Alyssa to work in Philadelphia with young children and teach them all things are possible. A new social club opening in Maniunk is opening its doors and welcoming dogs to join in on the fun. On April 17th, the dog-friendly club Bark Social opened up its third location at 3720 Main Street. Whether you have a dog or not, the club offers memberships for customers to enjoy features like a cafe, bar, and a boutique. The club has both indoor and outdoor spaces open throughout the day. It will offer food, drinks, a climate-controlled clubhouse, free Wi-Fi, TV, self-serve dog baths, and free parking. The bar will also have a little touch of Philadelphia because the beer list includes brews from Neshaminy Creek Brewing, Lancaster Brewing, and Concha Hawken Brewing Company. Bark Social will also be partnering with local shelters to host adoption events, so for all you animal lovers looking for a new pet or somewhere new to take your pet, Bark Social is the perfect place. Are you looking for the perfect place to buy your next birthday cake? Well, Donnie had the chance to go down and check out Second Daughter Baking Company, a family-owned artisan bakery located in the Bach Building. After winning awards for their baking skills and with the use of local fresh ingredients, these two sisters are always ready to make the perfect dessert for you. We started during the pandemic, of course, which is a time when no one ever thought to start a business or start anything. For us, it has to be its absolute perfect best because it's great to have a product out there, but why can't it be its best? So. That's it, that's really the philosophy behind Second Daughter. We have since gone on to win Best of Philly for our brownies. We've been nominated for James Beard. Um, so we've reached a lot of success in such a short time. We make brownies, that's what Second Daughter is known for. But of course we do cupcakes, giant like cookies the size of your face. <laughs> we also make wedding cakes, tarts, savory tarts, focaccia bread, muffins, really you name it, we make it. I've been baking professionally for seven years now. Second daughter was always a dream and it was something that evolved into what it is. There's been recent controversy surrounding a nationwide TikTok ban. Montana has just become the first state to actually restrict the app. The legislation would not stop the use of the app itself, but it would take it off the app store entirely for those in state. If the bill is signed by Governor Greg Gianforte, the ban could become active in January. Some of the factors that have brought about the bill include unlawful, unlawful surveillance by the Chinese government, as well as the misusing of children's data. The bill also references encouragement of dangerous activities among such users as throwing objects at moving automobiles and extinguishing fire with only one's body. TikTok has already suggested that they will take legal action to fight Montana's ban. South Korea is facing hard times. Today in South Korea, young adults 18 to 30 are facing many and a massive surge in depression that is causing young adults to stay at home and become very introverted. At this time, over a quarter of young adults ages 18 to 30 want to stay at home and not interact with people outside of their homes. South Korean government has drawn a solution. Young adults who are, quote, shut in, end quote, will receive $500 a month along with $1,500 in medical care, $577 in tuition and school fees, and $277 a month in job support fees, and $230 in mental health services. 
A new record has been broken as Pearl, a chihuahua, has broken the record for the world's smallest dog. Pearl measures in at 3.59 inches tall and 5 inches long. This dog is shorter than a popsicle stick, the height of a credit card, and almost as tall as a roll of toilet paper. Pearl loves dressing up and meeting new people. After she beat the record, her and her owner went on a shopping spree in Mulan and appeared on a TV program where she was incredibly calm. We here are hoping for the best for Pearl and hoping she can keep this record. Before we move on, we have one more break, but don't go anywhere. Because coming up, we have a story about a surprise visitor in an Alaska hospital and how over 100 dogs met up for a big play date. You know you watch. You shouldn't be watching this. You should be watching the South TV. Hey, watch the South TV. You know you watch. Man, Keegan is taking this you know you watch thing way too seriously. You know you watch the South TV. Enjoying nature in Alaska can be an incredible experience, and sometimes nature comes to you. The Providence Health Park in Anchorage, Alaska had an extra special guest come through their doors last Thursday when a young moose wandered into the building. Its hooves were no obstacle for the motion-activated door as the lobby plants thought caught its attention. Drawing it inside, building security were soon on the intercom warning staff and patients of the unexpected drop by and were able to corral the animal before it could cause any damage. Randy Hughes, hospital director, stated, quote, I think it had enough of everybody watching him eat, end quote. 130 golden retrievers will be meeting for a mass play date this summer in Cornwall, UK. The event will take place at Cherwell Adventure Park on June 25th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The meetup is available only to the 1,800 members of the Cornwall and Devon Golden Retrievers Facebook page. With limited space, event organizer D. Johnson stated, quote, Mine and my husband's six goldies are like our children, end quote. The money raised will go directly to Irish Retriever Rescue, an organization dedicated to rehoming unwanted, rescued, or abandoned golden retrievers. Popular ketchup company Heinz has spiced up their original Heinz 57 ketchup and added a new flavor trio to store's shelves. These three new ketchups include chipotle ketchup as a medium spicy option, jalapeno ketchup as a spicy option, and habanero ketchup as a very spicy option. Heinz Company says, quote, customers have told us that they're interested in more than just the heat level. They also want us to understand the source. Where does the heat come from? Unquote. Heinz has listened to the people and given them something to talk about. Heinz said these new sauces pair well with fries, burgers, tacos, pizza, and more, and they are a great way to add some heat and elevate your meals. In honor of our last LTV news episode ever, Casey and I are going to be the judges of that and do a live taste test of Heinz jalapeno ketchup. It is described to be hot and aggressive and adds the perfect amount of heat in every bite. Stay tuned to hear about what it tastes like with chicken nuggets after this quick break. All right, we are back with our live taste test in honor of our last episode. We had to spice it up with the Heinz jalapeno ketchup. Are you ready, Casey? I am so excited. All right, let's get into it. I, I made these chicken nuggets before we came <laughs> to film this episode. Mm. 
There it is. <laughs> oh, it's spicy. Mm -hmm. All right. So with the initial bite, I didn't taste the spice. It kind of it has like a little bit of an after. It kicked taste. in. So the um, jalapeno spice kicked in right after the initial bite. But it's really good. I'm going to give it a solid 9 out of 10. What's your rating? I might, I might have to go 9 out of 10 as well. Right. That, was, that was very good. I'm impressed. So, Aaron, before we end our show today, all of us at LTV uh, are going to have a quick surprise for you. So, for the past four years, Aaron has sat behind this desk doing what she loves, delivering news to her community. So, as a final goodbye, our crew put together a special video to highlight all of Aaron's best moments over the years here at LTV. Let's take a look. With the holidays right around the corner, LaSalle has a lot of activities in store. Hello, I'm Erin Holly. Global Language Awareness Week was held throughout the first week of March, allowing students to travel the world right here on campus. But coming up, Philly's favorite Broad Street bully is under police investigation following a fan event. Mako & Mako is looking to further expansion of its company to stadiums and arenas in the future. LaSalle made local news and was also rewarded for its commitment to service. Hello, I'm Aaron Holly. Now I have a quick question. <laughs> if Angus was in the National Dog Show, how do you think he would do? He would have won. Right, because Angus... Bulldog. The Philadelphia Flower Show was in full bloom down at the convention center. It's always good to try to be optimistic and to hope for the best. Fans of the hit 90s show, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, will have an opportunity to stay in the show's iconic house. The 2021 Philadelphia Film Festival is well underway already. NBC's The Voice is back and better than ever. Thank God we don't have masks on desk anymore. How do you feel about it? I feel amazing. Anyone going through a tough breakup this Valentine's Day might just find some comfort in feeding their ex to a zoo animal. <laughs> What better place is there to be before the big game on Sunday? Donnie and I are here at Tinsel Takes Flight, a Philly sports fan pop-up bar in Center City. That just about does it for this episode, but be sure to find us on the web, as well as the rest of LaSalle TV on our Facebook page. This is Aaron Holly and Donnie Argo for LTV News, signing off. World News, um, isn't that crazy how this woman completed 100 world records in 100 days? Until next episode, from Tori, Donnie, Maddie, and the entire crew, I'm Erin Holly. Thanks for watching LTV News, where the action never stops. So, Erin, you've been, you've had this gig for four years now. I just want to say, like, I, you know, I want to thank you so much because you're a big part of why I'm here and I'm doing this right now. So, just kind of like talk to us about like your experience at LTV and like how you know changing it's been to your college experience and. Well, you have the floor. Okay, well, first off, I want to say thank you guys for surprising me with that video. That was amazing. I am literally tearing up over here because I was not expecting that. So thank you guys. I love you all. LaSalle TV has impacted my career and my college experience tremendously. I came into LaSalle for the sole purpose of LaSalle TV and studying broadcast journalism because I've always had a passion for news. So LaSalle TV has really given me the opportunity to get hands-on experience on the desk, writing scripts, making news packages, doing just everything that I'm going to need in my future career as a journalist. So now that I'm in the process of looking for jobs like out there in the news industry, I'm just so thankful for this experience at LaSalle TV because I don't know where I'd be without it. And I have made so many amazing connections with all you guys and just learn so much about the news industry. So I just thank you guys because my experience would not be the same without all of you. So looking back at all those past shows, what has been kind of like your favorite moment or memory from that? <laughs> you know what I'm gonna say here. My favorite memory is when you and I were <laughs> cracking up on desk and could not stay serious during the Popeye's story a few episodes ago. Legendary moment. It was. Well, that just about does it for the last episode of LTV News, but be sure to find us on the web as well as the rest of LaSalle TV on our Facebook page. We love to hear your thoughts, so tweet at us using our Twitter handle and start the conversation. If you missed the scoop and want to see it, you can find episodes on our YouTube at LaSalle TV Philly page. Thank you to our crew and viewers for an amazing season. I'm Casey Medico.
And for the very last time, I'm Erin Holly. Thanks for watching LTV News, where the action never stops.